Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you my reading wrap up from last quarter. I started doing this thing last year where every three months I do a reading wrap up where I talk about all the books that I've been reading and so it sort of turned into this quarterly reading wrap up and every quarter I choose to do a different format just to mix it up so it's not like a plain boring reading wrap up and so this time I thought it'd be really fun to do the thing that everyone's been doing where you review books in one sentence and so basically I'm going to be going over the 31 books I read from October to December of last year and we're just gonna sum them up in one sentence. The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Eerie cosmic horror with fantastic writing that made me both laugh and sleep with the light on. Five stars. The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. Murder mystery about cults that took me on a wild but enjoyable ride. Parentheses, not quite as good as in my dreams I hold a knife. Four stars. The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. Giving very much breeding kink with a lot of cum. Two stars. Morning Glory Milking Farm by CM Nascosta. Girl fucks a cow and now I need therapy. Also even more cum than The Dragon's Bride. One star. I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. Slightly cuter, and with more plot than the other two monster romances, but the lizard makes a weird rattling noise during sex. Three stars. Angels and Demons by Dan Brown. Dad thriller with the most mediocre writing that you'll ever experience. One star. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. Kind of boring Nordic noir with an original Swedish title that translates to Men Who Hate Women, which absolutely tracks. Two stars. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. The writing is good and the twist is iconic, but the first half is much better than the second half. Four stars. Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Alice Feeney is addicted to plot twists and I am immediately checking her into a 12-step program. One star. Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. A slasher with terrible writing and questionable representation of a serial killer with an intellectual disability. One star. Come Closer by Sarah Gran. Horror novella about a woman slowly becoming possessed that was the perfect length and had impeccable writing. Four stars. The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. One of the best horror books I have ever read in the style of a Reddit thread from the perspective of a psychiatrist who is treating a man who has been institutionalized since he was six years old. Five stars. The Penalty Box by Odette Stone. A fake marriage hockey sports romance that was almost five stars if it hadn't been for one of the worst tropes ever to exist at the end, but the smut was still very good. Four stars. Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. A Regency fairy tale romance that is literally the cutest book I have ever read in my entire life with the best banter and cozy vibes. Absolute five stars. 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater. Super adorable Cinderella type story about a maid whose fairy godmother is actually a meddling fairy named Lord Blackthorn. Four stars. Long Shadow by Olivia Atwater. Cozy sapphic Regency fantasy that was cute but not as good as the first two books in the series. Four stars. The Surviving Trace by Callie Reed. An angsty time travel romance set in 1912 Charleston with major Outlander vibes. Four stars. Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. My first Sanderson book, which fell completely flat because of rush storylines and really annoying characters. Three stars. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. A sweeping generational story about a Korean family living in Japan that will truly be on my heart, mind, and deep soul for the rest of my days on this plane of existence. Five stars. A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Forgettable story, with aggravating fast pace, telling and not showing, and a shoehorned romance. Two stars. Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. I spent far too long away from this entire series, and so I actually really don't know my feelings on this book. I'd have to reread the whole series to really know. I think that might have been a run-on sentence, but that's fine. Three or four stars. Time will tell. I'll have to reread this another time. The Wrong Heart by Jennifer Hartman. The worst Jennifer Hartman book to ever exist with an asshole love interest that does not deserve rights, let alone the love of the main character. I would give it negative stars, but alas, I gave it one. The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. Super adorable marriage on the rocks romance about a guy who has to save his marriage by joining a book club of men that read romance books to improve their relationships. Four stars. I do realize that that one was more of a summary of the plot, not necessarily all my opinions, but I did say that it was super adorable at the beginning of the sentence, so. We're gonna let it slide. Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. A very cute sequel to the Bromance Book Club with the grumpy sunshine trope and great smut. Four stars. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Cozy fantasy about an orc 
that retires from fighting to open a cafe that feels like a warm hug. Also, thimble supremacy. Four stars. Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. Cozy fantasy romance with very funny writing, but slightly too much road trip plot device for me, but still very cute. I feel like that was very much a run on sentence. Four stars. Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison. Friends to lovers romance that takes place on a Christmas tree farm with very good smut and it was very cute. Four stars. In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. Literally the miscommunication trope for 400 pages. One star. The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lease. Rivals to Lovers Christmas Romance Novella. That's extremely forgettable and a bit insta-lovey. Three stars. The Christmas Wish by Lindsay Kelk. British Groundhog Day type story that is absolutely hilarious and truly made me laugh out loud multiple times. Five stars. Shady Hollow by Juno Black. A really cute, cozy mystery about anthropomorphic woodland creatures with a simple whodunit story alongside wholesome vibes. Four stars. So those were the 31 sentences for the 31 books that I read last quarter. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Also let me know what you thought of this format. Did you think it was fun? I really enjoyed filming it because I was able to pre-write all the sentences and then I didn't have that many takes because I knew what I was gonna say and we love to see it. I don't normally script my videos so it typically takes me well over an hour to film something like a wrap-up so I am very grateful for this format. If you've made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed watching it, feel free to use the mm, fox emoji in your comment. I just thought of a fox because the last book that I talked about was Shady Hollow and the main character of that book is a fox that's a journalist. So foxes are on the brain. But yeah, if you want to, leave it in your comment. If you don't, you don't have to. But if you do, I'll know that you made it to this point in the video. Also, do not forget to tell me which formats you would prefer for these quarterly wrap ups because I would love to hear your ideas. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.